evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Janelle Riley. I'm an associate features editor at Variety. I'm so thrilled to welcome you here for this SAG Foundation conversation with Kill Your Darlings, the movie you just saw. Um, and at this time, I am thrilled to welcome, I guess, two of the darlings. Um, first joining us is just one of the most exciting actors that I can remember seeing in a long, long time. Uh, you may have seen him in The Chronicle, Place Beyond the Pines. He'll soon be playing Harry Osborn in the upcoming Amazing Spider-Man 2. Please welcome Dane DeHaan. Also joining us is an actor of stage and screen. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you got to see him uh, on stage in plays like Equus or How to Succeed. There's one person nodding their head. Um, How to Succeed in Business without really trying. Um, he's also been in some movies, such as The Woman in Black and this little indie series called Harry Potter. Please welcome Daniel Radcliffe. So nice to see you two getting along after, after what we just went through. Um, congratulations on really great performances and in a, in a beautiful movie. Um, Thanks. Thank you. Uh, because this is a SAG audience, I always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? Uh, okay, so I got my, I did an episode of Law and Order SVU, but I didn't joined SAG at the time, and then I think I did this like um, uh, like trial anti-smoking commercial <laughs> where I was um, like a patient in a waiting room, and that's when I like had, had to join, so that's when I <laughs> joined. <laughs> I'm not even sure what my answer, would that be my first job in America? Yeah, would I think that, it would, well, yeah. that would be Kill Your Darlings then. So, you get your SAG card on this movie? Well, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've never done like a filming job in, in the States before this. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Because Woman in Black was shot in England, too. Woman in Black was in England. Uh, Taylor Panama was in Panama. Um, and uh, yeah, everything. Obviously, Harry Potter was all in at home as well. So yeah. So this my first, made you. This is my first. My first job um, working on a film outside, outside the UK. So it was. It was really exciting. That's fantastic. Um, get ready to pay your dues. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the good news is, you can vote in the SAG Awards this year. Hey. Uh, <laughs> and they send you screeners. Nice. <laughs> And I, and I bet they and I bet they send loads. I bet you get loads before the BAFTA ones as well, don't you? you we don't do. really get into BAFTA. I know exactly. That's the thing. Here, you yeah. must get loads before. Is that, <laughs> yeah, that is. Everything's ahead in America. <laughs> um. Um, so I want to start with Kill Your Darlings. I know this was a movie that was in the works for a long time. How did the script find its way to you, and, and what attracted you to your respective roles? Well, I mean, I was I was doing Equus um, on Broadway when uh, John Krakidis, the co-writer and director, came to see see the show, and um, yeah, he sent me sent me the script after that, um, and I you know loved it immediately. It was such great writing. Um, it was such a, a complicated story, yet it was very immediate and hit you in a very kind of emotional and visceral place, and. Um, yeah, and then on meeting John, you know, a question that I've been asked uh, over a lot over the last few days has been like, what was, you know, were you, did you have any trepidation before working with a, a first-time director? And like, no, because I mean, when you meet John, uh, he had, it was so clear immediately that he had such a vision for this film and one that he had lived with and refined for a long time already. Um, and that was five years ago. And um, yeah, so it, he was somebody it was very easy to have kind of immense confidence in very quickly. Uh, I was just sent the script uh, by my agent, and you know, it's always when you read a really great script, it's such a rare find and uh, such an exciting thing. And um, the role, it was like, you know, read the script and look at the role of Lucian, who's also like this incredibly complicated, uh, incredible uh, person and had a lot of elements of 
that I hadn't felt like I hadn't really done before in my roles. So uh, then I, yeah, I flew to New York and read with Dan and with John. And uh, yeah, luckily that went well, and here I am. <laughs> uh, Daniel, did you actually audition for this film? Uh, I did, yeah, uh, initially when, um, around the time that I was doing Equus. And it was important to me too because, uh, you know, coming off a big series like that, you, you are very aware that your name carries a certain uh, cachet with it for a certain period of time. And, you know, you want to be, and I was given advice by several people whom I admire who, you know, always said you have to sort of look out for the fact that people are, you know, basically I wanted to audition so that if I was so terrible that I couldn't do the job, John would be forced to confront the fact and wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> um, and and I, needed to, I needed to know that he was, um, you know, that he, that he wanted me for, for all the, because he thought that I could play the part um, as much as anything else. And, and, I, and I think I needed to prove something to myself in, in that and, and to him. And, and, um, and yeah, so I, I, I you know, because people sometimes labor under the assumption that, you know, when I have meetings with directors, sometimes people don't think I will audition for things. And I always like say, um, you know, I really want this, please. You know, if, if you want me to audition, I, I would love to, because, uh, you know, there's, there's no point in pride if you want to fight for a fucking part. <laughs> so I like, you know, I mean, that's, that's, I'm, I, 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 you know, and, 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 you know, so, uh, and also I was very aware that like, other than Potter, he wouldn't have, really un of course, but you know, other than those things, he wouldn't have a chance to see, have seen me and other stuff, so I wanted to have that experience of him working with me, so yeah. So did you two first meet in your, was it a chemistry read, or yeah. is it fair to call it that? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair. Uh, that's where we first met, yeah. And did you know at the time that it was gonna be Dane? Um, pretty quickly, yeah, I mean, it was, um, uh, you know, he was the first person that auditioned that day and, you know, kind of did make life very hard for everybody else that came after him. <laughs> and, um, he, you know, because there, there was the immediate thing that struck you when you walked into the room and, you know, up till this point you've only been reading the script and looking at photos of Lucian. And so that was the only image I had. Now I can only see, think of you. But, like, at the time I, you know, could only see these photos. And, of course, Dane walked in and there is a, a striking resemblance, first and foremost. But then you know, to, to be give, to have given the performance that you gave in that audition as well was it was just yeah, it was fantastic. And and yeah, it was uh, no contest for the rest of the day really. What was the scene you guys did? We did uh, the scene when we first meet and then we did the scene right before I go to the merchant marines when we're kind of saying goodbye. Wow. Well when you're saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's still a little bitter. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> A <laughs> little, little bit of Ginsburg poke through there. <laughs> um, and, you know, this whole ensemble, you guys all have such great chemistry together. Was the chemistry between you guys instantaneous? Was it developed on set? Not just with you guys, but with Jack Houston and Ben Foster? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, I think, a combination of both. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of time uh, to make the chemistry uh, before we got onto set. We did have, like, a week of rehearsal. Um, the director took us through a bunch of, like, improvs and stuff. It kind of felt like being at drama school again. Um, but it, it was it was really helpful, and it, he kind of threw us into intimate situations uh, from the start where we really had to trust in one another, you know? I mean, Dan and I kind of hit it off from the start. Um, in terms of friendship and stuff like that, it wasn't like we were battling to like <laughs> make make like a love for one another happen. Um, but th but that process definitely helped to uh, you know it aided in that chemistry. And also there there was I think you know everyone um, who was involved in the film uh, really came to it with an attitude. With they were you know ready to kind of give of themselves and, and, and all kind of pitch in and work together and engage with each other and have fun and try to, you know, recreate some semblance of the, the camaraderie of the, the, the original beats. And, um, yeah, it was... And also I think John, uh, the director, does definitely deserve a lot of credit for, you know, doing things like organising uh, a sort of, you know, a first night party, as it were, just for everyone to meet and sort of get together and trying to... You know, everyone made it. These things only work if everyone makes an effort to hang out and engage with each other. And we were lucky on this film; we had a great group of people who all did. Well, I, as I recall, I think you shot it in 24 days. Yeah, 24 days. Wow. And I'm going to guess that the budget for this movie was probably 
smaller than the catering budget on Harry Potter or Spider-Man. <laughs> so I'm going to assume this was a passion project for everyone involved. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for every single person. You know, they were all passionate about it, and we were all in it for all the right reasons. And, um, you know, it, consequently, you know, everyone was just, it, it's, it always makes your job a lot easier when you can trust in the people around you. And uh, I definitely always felt that way on set. Was there any particular scene that was, was difficult for you, um, either logistically or just emotionally? Logistically, they were all difficult scenes. <laughs> <laughs> that was shot in 24 days, as you just mentioned. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, that was one of the, the triumphs of this film. And I think it's, you know, in, uh, in these moments um, when there's two actors sitting on stage, it's very easy to sort of end up just talking about the acting or just talking about, you know, John. But that you... the the fact that this film was made for so little money and 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 you know in so little time that it doesn't end up looking that good unless like a lot of people work hard and i mean the the heads of i mean m makeup and hair uh, costume the production design and and um uh, i was absolutely and reed morano our, our director of photography like they to do what they did with the time constraints, I mean, was just, I mean, amazing. Um, in terms of scenes that were particularly uh, tricky, one one scene that, one scene that I had thought was going to be tricky, but actually ended up not being, was when we actually came to film one of those scenes that we'd done for the audition, the goodbye scene, um, because. I had, it had been the scene that I did when I auditioned, and then it was the scene that Dane had done when he'd auditioned, so we'd all both done it a lot, um, and knew it really, really well, and there's always, I always, you know, worry about that, and, you know, think if I, because if I'm having this emotional response to it every time I read the script, will I then be able to keep that fresh for when I'm doing it, and um, John did this fantastic thing before we started the scene, uh, he just sent, he asked the crew to leave the room and he, he just took me over to one side and said, you know, that your your goal in the scene is just to not let him leave, whatever happens. Then he took you to one side and said something to you and uh, and he just asked us to improvise the scene away from the script and within seconds, like I was, we were both sort of, you know, floods of tears and and there was something incredibly powerful about that and I'd never really had that that quite that level of intensity of feeling just and because I never quite believe it when somebody says uh, oh I just became that character you didn't become a different character nothing happened you but you what you were was completely emotionally open and honest and available to somebody else and that that isn't something that happens all the time and when it does happen in that context it was it was th just thrilling for you uh yeah well I mean the I, like Dan said, I mean, all the scenes kind of presented their own challenges because of the time constraint. But, I mean, for instance, like the scene that we shot on the steps of the library when I'm leaving and Dan comes up to me and, you know, convinces me to not leave. Uh, we shot that scene in 12 minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's a pretty emotionally uh, tight uh you know, elevated scene. Um, and also, we were at the time getting a lot of pressure from the security of Columbia to get off of campus <laughs> because they wanted to go to bed and we and and, and we had like uh, it was just time for us to go and we had to get the scene. By the way uh, what I love is that when John tells his story, our director's not here tonight but we've, we've heard him tell this story a lot over the last couple of days and when John tells his story he always says um, uh, there was some mix up and we had to finish five hours early <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I'm sure that wasn't the case. <laughs> Sorry carry on. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, I spent an entire night naked in the Hudson River, uh, which presented its own set of challenges. Yeah, sure. and he, he, like, he, he did not, comp there was not a word of complaint. Like, he was <laughs> stoic. It was fantastic. Uh, obviously, this film is set before either of you were alive. Um, what sort of research, if any, did you do into the time period and into specifically these iconic characters? I mean, John, John asked us to only research our characters during this time period, which obviously made it um, uh, quite helpful because there was a huge amount to uh, digest about Alan, if you want to. And, um, you know, I'm, I mean, the, his diaries were the first sort of port of call, really. Uh, it, the, um, you know, they, he writes, he really, you know, he paints a very clear picture of himself at that age um, and, you know, sort of concentrating on the differences between what you are and what you want to be and, you know, the, the, that's a very powerful thing, I think, at that age particularly and um, and the gap between that and the struggle between those two things is um, was one of the things I sort of 
latched onto with Alan and, and really liked. It was one of the things that appealed to me about playing him because it was seemed complicated and interesting. Um, and in terms of the period, like I mean, the I mean, I like to think I know a little bit about the 40s and the 40s in America and sort of what was going on. But um, the main thing for me in terms of getting a sense of it was, as always, is is music. And that's I sort of made endless trendless trawling of iTunes for stuff from the 40s and 50s. Because that's the thing, it's not the the famous songs from that era we all know and sort of uh, can't really give a sense of that era but because if they're that famous, they've become classics, they're now sort of timeless, they've been covered so many times. But whereas actually the finding those songs that you, there's only one terrible recording of it from the 1940s and like getting a sense of the stuff they would have been hearing just all around them was kind of fun. Uh, yeah, well, you know, the script does, uh, I think, a really great job of uh, presenting Lucian very accurately for this time of his life. Um, but if, you know, I did go back and read Ginsburg's uh, diaries and correspondence between Ginsburg and Kerouac. Um, Edie Parker wrote memoir, a memoir, uh, and Edie and Lucian were actually uh, like best friends at this time, historically. So there are little tidbits um, about him, like really interesting stories, uh, things he did, like he, he stood on the dock of a ship and sunk it just to feel what it was like to be on a sinking ship. Um, he like would go to a restaurant and order the most expensive steak raw, just so he could throw it in the waiter's face. Um, he would be um, he would be drinking at a bar, like drinking wine, and he would look at the person next to him and bite off the glass and chew the glass in his mouth, just to uh, get a reaction uh, from him. You know, um, and so like these kinds of things, I think, uh, helped me to discover kind of the the spine and the essence of who he was, but really also just validated the Lucian that was all already in the script. How method are you? Did you go to any restaurants and bite wine glasses? Uh, you know, I ate the glass, but I just couldn't do the steak. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you draw the line. That's, yeah, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> uh, was there anything you did uncovered in your research that actually was surprising to you that you didn't know? I actually didn't know much about Lucian Carr. This, was, this whole period was um, a surprise to me. Yeah, me too. I mean, I didn't know the story, you know. I obviously knew the beats. Uh, I was familiar with some of their work, and I knew what they stood for, but I certainly didn't know how they became who they become, became, how they, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, uh, and I certainly had never heard of Lucian, so it was an entirely new story to me. And one of the things that I think is great about it is a story that not a lot of people know, but really everybody should. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I, I mean, I knew nothing about Ginsburg's personal life, really. Um, and the thing that stood out for me as as something that just you know seemed like a fascinating detail was it, the relationship with his mother, and obviously it was a, a key thing in the film. But um, but it really was. I mean, when I the more I thought about that kind of the more fascinated by it I became, um, just because of the idea of him, you know, as a young man having to visit your mother in institutions and to be seeing her like that and that must lead to a sense of kind of not wanting to see her because it's so upsetting and frightening and 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 then the guilt that would come from you know having to deal with the fact that on some level you don't want to see your mother at that point but at the same time needing I mean it must just have that that guilt must have really inf informed so much of how he related to people at, at that age and is a huge thing to try and um, move beyond and so it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely, because we, we, you know, it was nice to have him humanized in that way. We don't, it's nice to, you know, th we do hold these people up as icons of, of literature and it's nice to actually portray him at a time in his life when he was just full of doubt and uncertainty and, and excitement and all those other things too. But that's, that's why it's, uh, that's why it's being 18. <laughs> I want to take some questions from the audience. And as always, I apologize in advance if I butcher your name. I feel your pain. Uh, question from Kimberly, oh, for Dan. Wants to know what it's like as a Brit to play an American icon. And how did you master that accent? Um, you know, I don't think of um, nationality as being something that, you know, I don't really consider it or uh, other than the, you know, the challenge of having to do the accent. Um, you know, that's, beyond that, I don't think it, you know, it's obviously important to think of where a character comes from and, and you know, um, but, but there's no, I, I certainly wasn't intimidated by the idea, the idea of playing an American. It was just, there were certain things I knew I had to get right. Um, and the accent is, you know, I'm, I'm fairly lucky in that I have a, a, a relatively decent ear for accents and um, 
I don't have my dad's ear, cause, thankfully, because it was always that was like a joke in our family growing up, because he's so terrible at all of them. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, and 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 after that, after sort of you know starting to get to grips with it, it becomes just a case of doing it and doing it and doing it and repeating it and talking in it as much as the people who love you can bear, and um, and just. He's trying to live with it as much as possible. And then when I'm on set, I just talk in it all the time because it's much easier than going back and forth. Well, it's not only American accent, it's American accent of a specific time and place. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, no, I mean, it was, uh, it was a job um, trying to find old people from New Jersey on the internet. It was um, <laughs> like, <laughs> it was... <laughs> there's, um, there's, there's lots of. Uh, eventually, you, you can, you can. They're out there. They're, they're, there's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the fun parts of my job is the stuff I ended up, you know, the strange, un beat unrelated things I ended up listening to discussed because of the, the perfectness of the accent I was hearing. <laughs> uh, I have a question from Michelle Coyle. There for everyone, um, except me, I presume. Um, <laughs> wants to know what was your worst audition experience, and was there ever a role you desperately wanted and didn't get? Uh, I remember auditioning for I think I, it was Puck in I made some nice <laughs> dream when I first got out of college, and like my cell phone kept ringing oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I like was like halfway through the monologue and it wasn't going that great anyway <laughs> <laughs> and then my cell phone rang and then you know of course they're like oh that's okay but you're like actually no like it's not and we all know <laughs> like we all know it's not okay <laughs> And then I feel like I, I feel like it rang again, but maybe it's just, I mean, that was definitely my most devastating experience. Oh, but what a fair turn for the actor's cell phone to ring during an audition. That's true, but, you know. Did you appreciate yeah. the irony at the time? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I did. <laughs> By the way, mindset, when you said you auditioned for Puck, I was like, you went out for Glee? Oh, <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> Glee, Shakespeare. <laughs> um, I, 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 uh, I do remember there was one, there was a film I auditioned for before Potter that I really wanted and I didn't get. And I do remember being devastated at the time because I was going to get to play, I think, Christian Bale's son, which was going to be super cool. And I didn't get it. Um, uh, it was Equilibrium. But I didn't get that, and then I got Potter, so swings and roundabouts. Yeah. I, think <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I was just—you just named the one Christian Bale movie I haven't seen. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, may, it may have been released under a different title. Who knows? Um, no, I just haven't seen it. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, question from Colleen Bra. Uh, wants to know what's one thing you know now as an actor that you wish you knew when you started. Just one. Exactly. <laughs> Um, you know, I was, there was a lot, uh, on Potter, I really just was kind of having fun at the start and not really worrying about the acting. And then as I, as I learned how much I loved it and started taking it seriously, um, I guess I, it was really just always a case of trusting my instincts and, and I didn't you know, when I watch those films, it's there are moments that I go, okay, that's fine, and then there are moments where I see my instincts obviously didn't quite know what to do there, um, and you know, you can sort of see the join, as it were, um, and you know, there's there's definitely certain things that actually, you know, John talked to me about on Killy Darlings that I'd never really been, and it's going to sound, this is slightly embarrassing to admit in front of all you guys, but there's, it, you know, I had never been taught to just very some very basic ideas about. Um, you know, what do you want out of this scene? What is what is you? What is your character when you say that line? What effect are you trying to have on that person? And you know, um, I think uh, we. Uh, I would have loved to know some of that stuff earlier on, to be honest, because um, it's because it is definitely uh, it's been incredibly helpful. Because it and and now like I. You know, now I love breaking down a script. Now I know how to break down a script, and I have a, a technique which I can fall back on. You know, when my instincts 
you know, aren't enough, and I have some, and or or aren't a good enough way in, or I need to, you know, I need some help. I actually have something, a process now to fall back on, rather than just sort of, uh, yeah, yeah, wandering and feeling like, oh, it must be me. Um, so you know, it's 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 definitely uh, it's it's definitely uh, I, I suppose uh, that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I've just become a lot less critical. Um, of things, you know, I never knew a movie was made in 24 days. Um, you know, I like when I was in acting school, I just had all these opinions, and I thought I knew just everything, and you know how everything was done. And I guess I just thought, like, you know, all films are created equal, and they all have the same amount of time. And you know, it's that you know you think of it as like this really cushy thing. And I think as I, I've gone along and, and seen you know, all the, the, the constraints that happen on different films and all the circumstances, um, I, I've become a lot less uh, critical, for sure. I'm curious, because you both started acting at such a young age. Um, when did you know it was something you wanted to do for a career? Or was it, was it just fun in the beginning? Uh, I, I, you know, I really didn't do it professionally until like five years ago. Um, so for me, it was always just fun um, growing up. I mean, I don't really have like an aha moment. I, I grew up playing dress up and then like the place I went, was going to church had like this pamphlet for a musical theater camp that I started going to when I was four years old. And uh, by the time I was in high school, I was like just sleeping through classes and then going to rehearsal for the school play and then like shoving fast food in my mouth and <laughs> going to rehearsal for the community theater play until like 11 at night. And it's just like always what I have always uh, obsessed over and spent, wanted to spend my time doing. Um, it was really on the, I mean, I always, I knew I loved it and I knew I loved being a part of, of, of filming and, uh, you know, I, I definitely had, like, when I got to a film set for the first time when I was nine on David Copperfield, I was, I definitely had, like, a, I have arrived sort of moment, like, I definitely was, like, I, uh, I felt just happier than I was at school, and I was having a great time. And you know, it was one of those things where, like, all, all the stuff that got me shouted at at school was valued on a film set. Um, <laughs> and like, you know, like hyperactivity and talking a lot and being kind of, you know, and, and enjoying getting involved rather than sitting still and being told to, and you know, regurgitate information. Um, so you know, I, um, I I always knew I loved it, but I think the the, the moment that I really started um, to see the possibilities of acting and to see specific th and to start and to start to have specific ambitions for myself as an actor beyond just staying on a film set um, was around was the, the third Harry Potter film when I worked with Gary Oldman and David Thewlis because I think that before that um, you know all the older actors that we had on set treated me like a kid because I was a kid um, but then even when I turned fourteen. They they initially had known me as a kid, so it, you know I, I understand why it was hard to you know move out of that for them. But then Gary Oldman and David Thewlis met me as a fourteen year old, and so treated me kind of like as a young man, and really you know shared uh, were very generous with me in a way that everyone had been, but in a way that they were just differently, and and it was very cool. So yeah, third film. A uh, question from oh forgive me, Jordan Van Vrocken. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it, but Jordan Van Rocken would be an awesome name. <laughs> and an awesome band. Um, wants to know what advice you have for young adults trying to make this a long-term career. She points out, I'm not going to say your age, because you don't know this yet, but you're not supposed to tell that. Um, but she's a teenager. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know. Um, you know, as long as you're doing it for all the right reasons, then just keep fighting the good fight, you know, and just keep standing up for what you believe in and, and why you want to do this and follow that passion, you know. Uh, that's really, for me, that's always been what it's about, you know. This has always been what I love to do, and I could never imagine myself doing anything else. So I just kind of went unabashedly towards that goal. Um, and if that's what you want to do, then, you know, don't be shy. Go for it. 
And then, you know, if you are ever lucky enough to be able to do this for a living, then just remember how lucky you are. Because <laughs> like, there's, there's a lot of people who would love to be, um, to be doing it. And that's, I mean, that's it. I, I can't speak uh, to getting into the industry because I just, you know, won the lottery. So it's, I, it's, it's, it's harder in that way for me to comment on that or give advice. But I can say, like, once you're in it, just, um, just you know, we're in an industry where you can have an amazing time and enjoy it because it, it really is, I think, the best job in the world. <laughs> yeah, rejection is so hard at any age, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to imagine as a kid auditioning and you said you were devastated when you didn't get the part in that awful Christian Bale yeah, movie. Yeah, but that was more about, but that was, but that was more about not, but that was more about, shit, how am I going to get out of school? Like yeah. that wasn't, that wasn't so much about like that was, cause that was what film offered me at first was like a way I didn't have to go to school. Um, <laughs> and, and I mean, I still had to do schooling, but I didn't have to be at school where yeah. I was with teachers that hated me and. <laughs> like you know, I, I didn't have to you know do that. So it was. Um, so yeah, I mean, I. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot in the beginning of the question. Now. Oh, just how that. do you deal with? I, I mean, I actually business. think like I was. I was a. When I look back, like I was amazingly relaxed through my all my Harry Potter auditions. Like I was so uh, chilled about it, and I was really. I was never nervous. Auditions were always like really fun as a kid. I remember thinking like I remember really enjoying it. Uh, question, uh, what's to know, um, what inspires you? <laughs> you're, or you're very uninspired. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, honestly, um, athletes, um, athletes but, uh, of, of across all sports. I mean, I could name specific ones. Some of them would be cricketers you'd never have heard of, but there's a lot of American footballers and boxers and people in there as well. Um, just because I think, uh, you know, I used to... I used to, between the matinee and the evening show of How to Succeed on a Saturday when we were like nine months into the run and beyond that, um, I would watch uh, the five hours ahead boxing from on Saturday night that was going on in London um, because I would just watch it and go, if they can do 12 rounds of that, I can get through that dance number again. <laughs> and, like, and I do, and I just think that the dedication and the discipline that athletes have to um, put in to achieve what they want to is, you know, uh, incredible. And, and, and you know, I, I think I, I kind of aspire to have that same level of dedication as I think I, I know you do. And, you know, I think, um, I think you have to because um, it's, uh, yeah, it's worth the amount of pride they have in what they do is, is inspiring. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, uh, I mean, mine's a little more narrow. Like, I'm just inspired by uh, other actors and actors that I have always looked up to. And, um, you know, kind of the, the fact that we're lucky enough to do this thing that, it, for me, is like this never-ending quest to, like, oh, we, we get to do something that we, we will kind of never be good enough at it, as good at it as we want to be, you know? So it's it's my, it's the inspiration to, to always get better and to try to better myself and to have found something that I'm actually passionate about. Like I really am fueled by uh, the work itself. Uh, Christine, Nicole, um, wants to know basically what's up next on the horizon? Dane, I'd really like to see you do a movie where you don't try to kill someone. <laughs> it's three in a row now. <laughs> Well, I uh, I'm not, I'm I, I'm gonna play uh, James Dean in this film that Anton Corbin's directing uh, wow. called Life, and uh, I'm not gonna try to kill anyone <laughs> on, on screen at least. Um, I'm um, going back to England to do. Uh, a new version of Frankenstein with James McAvoy. Um, uh, James is playing uh, Dr. Frankenstein and, uh, and I'm playing uh, Igor. <laughs> yeah. What hump. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say. yeah, no, I'm. Uh, it's yeah, it's I'm. It's a, it's Max Landis who uh, wrote Chronicle oh, wow. has has written the script and it's it's by far the most 
um, interesting, inventive, and imaginative thing that I've read coming out of a studio since I finished Potter. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. To, uh, you know, it's one of those things that everyone thinks they sort of know what it will be, but no one knows what it's going to be. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. And you both have films coming out. You obviously have Spider Man. Yes, Spider-Man yeah. uh, will be coming out in May. Um, yeah, and then I, I just, after Spider-Man, I finished this, uh, my first comedy. Whoa. Thank God. <laughs> um, called Life After Beth, that uh, oh stars me and Aubrey Plaza, yes. and John C. Riley's in it, and mm -hmm. Molly Shannon, and Paul Reiser, and Cheryl Hines, and a whole lot of really funny people. It's like a zombie rom-com, so it'll be... <laughs> A Zomcom, I believe. It's a yes. Zom. Yeah. Sorry, Zomcom. <laughs> yeah, and you know that'll be coming out sometime. It was an independent small movie, so yeah. we'll see what happens with it. But yeah. And I know you had horns at Toronto, which everyone loved. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, horns was, was at Toronto, and the F word was was there too. And um, the F word, as I think you know, is probably going to be the one. I, I imagine we're the one first out of, of those of those two, which will be hopefully out. Hopefully, they should both be out in um, you know next year sometime. So I'm I'm excited to you know for more people to see that because the F word also is one for me where I don't have to like cry or get covered in blood or something. And I actually it's just a fun, a, a fun but also a very uh, smart movie. And just out of curiosity, has anyone from either like the Ginsburg state or the Carr, I don't know if Carr has an estate, has anyone who, who knew these people um, given you feedback on the movie? I mean, I've met a couple of Ginsburg's friends who, uh, who are really pleased with it and, 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 and seem to think my portrayal of Alan does some justice to who he was as a young man. So I was, I was obviously uh, thrilled with that. But yeah, I think, I mean, I, I haven't... I mean, I've, I've met someone from the Ginsburg estate. John, our director, has had more uh, direct dealings with them. But I, th I think, from what he said, they seem pretty happy. Well, you guys did an amazing job. Congratulations again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.